This is going to be a quick revision video for electrode potentials. So electrode potentials are all about oxidation and reduction and the oxidation state of different species. So the definition of oxidation is when a species loses an electron. Reduction is when a species gains an electron. A good mnemonic for remembering this is oil rig. Oxidation is loss when you're talking about electrons. Reduction is gain. So when you lose an electron, it's oil. When you gain an electron, it's rig. Easy way to remember it. So let's take this equilibrium down here as an example. So you have Fe2+, plus or iron 2+, plus is green um, in solution of water, and Fe3+, plus is orange. As you can see, Fe2+, plus has lost an electron. If we do the forward reaction, it's gone to a, a different ion and an electron, which means it's been oxidised because oxidation is loss. Whereas the reverse reaction is Fe3+, plus, plus an electron, goes to Fe2+. Plus. So it's gained electron, also known as a reduction, which is rig. <clears throat> see, it's nice and easy to remember this. You can just look at it and see, has it gained or has it lost an electron to tell if it's an oxidation or reduction. So how does this apply to electrode potentials? Well, <clears throat> if we have this equilibrium here, copper 2+, plus, plus two electrons goes to copper solid, we may want to know so how easy is it to lose electrons or how easy is it for it to gain electrons. Well, to do this, we have to use a standard. This is the same with any other scale that's, say, um, degrees Celsius, the melting point um, slash freezing point of um, wa uh, water, the melting point of ice and freezing point of water is zero degrees C, and the boiling, port point, uh, the boiling point of water at sea level is 100 degrees C. They're, they're kind of standards that the scale is based upon. Well, for electrode potentials, the standard is a hydrogen electrode, <clears throat> hence the name standard electrode potential, which is 0, 0.00 volts, the zero point as such. This is when you have H plus in aqueous and an E minus, so an electron, is in equilibrium of half H plus, um, H2, which is hydrogen gas. So here we'll have some kind of platinum electrode. Uh, connected to a platinum wire because it's inert, it doesn't react, it doesn't take um, any electrons away or give any electrons uh, into this equi equilibrium. Here we're pumping in, if you imagine like a funnel or something there, you're pumping in um, hydrogen gas and this, this will be the hydrogen gas part of the equation and here we're going to have a one molar or one mole per diem cubed source of H plus, so probably some kind of acid, maybe HCl, something like that. And the the rate at which the electrons are transferred in this equilibrium is defined as the zero point, so zero point zero zero volts. So there'll be a voltmeter connected to this. Just to note, the standard conditions are two hundred ninety eight Kelvin, one mole per dm cubed for solutions, and one atmosphere of pressure. So taking measurements, well. <clears throat> We had this equilibrium just at the bottom here that we wanted to know. So how do we use the standard to actually take measurements to find out what the uh, electrode potential for this half cell, in this case, uh, this bit along here, is known as a half cell, the copper half cell that we're looking at. So how do we find the, uh, the standard electrode potential for this half cell? Well, we set up a system that looks a bit like this. On the right here, we've, we've still got our platinum electrode and um, platinum wire. We've got our H2 gas going in there. Just as before, this right hand side is just the standard electrode. We've got our one molar acidic solution. But now, because we compare it to something, we need a salt bridge. This is because there, there are some um, ions and salts uh, taking place here and they need to flow like in a circuit. And this is, just allows them to flow from one solution to the other. We've got our voltmeter here for taking measurements. Here we have our copper solid electrode. And here we have some solution of copper 2 plus. Again, it must be one molar because we remember the standard conditions because it's all taking place under standard conditions. So we can actually, we can set up this half cell. So the copper 2 plus here and the copper solid here. 
against this hydrogen, standard hydrogen electrode and we can measure a voltage. For example, if the reading is plus 0.34 volts, that means the standard electrode potential of this half cell is plus 0.34 volts. And this is a, a key point when we're setting up cells, which I'm now about to go on to, because we need to know what's giving out the electrons and what's taking the electrons. So now we're going to talk about cells. Well, a cell is basically where you add two half cells together to form um, some, some kind of net voltage. Uh, this is how batteries work. You may have uh, some lead and some acid, maybe some other metals and acids and things like that, depending on what battery you're using. And um, when you mix these together, they'll output a voltage to power your device, say in your smartphone is probably a lithium ion battery. So like I said, a cell is two half cells together. And as an example, we'll just take these two here and here, the copper and the zinc. These are the equilibria of the relevant half cells. And we want to make an overall cell and find the equation for that. One thing we need to note is the most positive of the two, or it could be more in a different example, but of this example, it's just the two. The most positive gains electrons, it's reduced. Remember, oil rig. The most negative gives out electrons, it's oxidized. So in this case, the most positive is the copper half cell, meaning that it's more of a Ford's reaction. It's gaining those two electrons to form solid copper. Whereas the most negative is the zinc half cell, and this means it's going from zinc solid to the zinc ion and giving out electrons. So when we put these together, we can write it out. As we said, it's Cu2 plus going to solid copper. So Cu2 plus in an aqueous state is going to copper in a solid state. And that's with two electrons being gained. Now we're looking at the other one, we're saying solid zinc is going to zinc two plus ions and two electrons. So we've got solid zinc going to zinc two plus in aqueous state and two electrons. Well, that would be the overall equation because you can cancel things out, two electrons cancel out with each other. So we have Cu2 plus aqueous plus zinc solid goes to Cu solid and zinc two plus aqueous. And the E cell, which is the overall, the overall uh, voltage output for this cell would be 0.34 minus, minus 0.76 volts. That's what it'd be. So what you have to do in this case is basically just take the difference between the two values. So that's just the same as saying 0.76 plus 0.34. If you put that in your calculator, you'd get 1.1 volts. And so that would be the E cell value, the voltage output of this cell. Now that was a, a simple example. Let's take a slightly more complex example. You may have to balance these equations using something like H plus, H2O, or OH minus, and you may have to have multiples. <clears throat> Just like balancing any equation, you may have to have multiples. So if I take a slightly more complex example, MnO4 minus, let's make that minus a bit more clear, and Mn2 plus. Well, this equation, as it's always in equilibrium, we have MnO4 minus, and that's in some kind of equilibrium with Mn2 plus. As these are ions, they're most likely aqueous. Okay, so let's work out the oxidation state of um, manganese in MnO4 minus. Well, oxygen has a two minus um, charge on it and the oxidation state. We have four of them, which is an eight minus charge, but we have uh, the whole ion overall has a minus charge, meaning manganese must be plus seven, because plus seven minus eight is minus one. Okay, so we've got that. So how do we go from Mn7 plus to Mn2 plus? Well, we've just got to gain five electrons, right? Seven, um, seven minus five is two. <clears throat> okay, 
Well, now, if we do that, we have some source of oxygen left over. What are we going to do with that oxygen? Well, this is where this point here comes. We can comes into play. We can balance this equation. If we're doing things in aqueous and aqueous, chances are that means it's in water, right? Most likely, not always, but most likely when you have ionic species, it's going to be in water, especially at sort of A level. So what we can do is we can find out, hmm, what, what of these will combine with oxygen quite well? Well, H plus is very, very good, and aqueous again. And in this case, to balance it, because we have four oxygens being kicked out, 8H plus, which can form 4H2O. Right, so there, that would be our overall equation. We've taken into account any multiples, which in this case we don't actually need to do. We've taken into account any other balancing that we need to do. We've uh, used protons to combine with that oxygen to form water, and we've managed to add in the five electrons to make Mn2+. That's just a slightly more complex example. I hope you found the video helpful. This was a quick revision video for you. It didn't go into too much, too much depth, but hopefully it will remind you before exams and things like that. If you think it's helpful, share it with your friends, subscribe for more, and like the video below. Thank you.